Um, the classical view of CLL is that it's a disease of accumulation, mm -hmm. and indeed it is, uh, um, but that the uh, component of the clone that grew or divided uh, was quite small. Um, and it is indeed a small fraction, but it's, I think it's bigger than people had anticipated uh, in the past. Uh, and uh, what was shown was that if you asked people to drink heavy water, uh, which is a uh, non-radioactive variant of water, uh, that uh, allows one to measure the synth synthetic rate of something, in this case DNA, as a measure of division. Uh, what was found is that the uh, number of cells that divide in CLL was actually higher than people anticipated. Uh, so this was an indication that there was indeed a fraction of dividing cells. Uh, um, and it allowed actually a numerical calculation for the percent of the clone that actually divided in a given day. Um, it's a small number. It's around 0.1 to 2 or 3 or 4 percent of the total number. Uh, but if you think about the number of cells in a patient, which is like 10 to the 14th, it's 1 percent of that is still a lot of cells. You know, so, um, so that's the fraction that we're talking about when we say the dynamic uh, fraction in CLL. Um, it's a fraction that we think is important clinically uh, um, because it's the fraction of cells um, that have recently divided, have recently replicated their DNA, and members of the clone in that fraction, because they've divided and replicated the d their DNA, have had an opportunity, if you will, to make a mistake in that process. Um, and if there is a mistake in DNA replication and it involves a gene that's important for clonal growth or survival, um, then that can lead to progression of the disease.